morning church let's prepare our hearts today as we worship the king of glory in this place let us pray heavenly father we come to you today with grat with gratitude in our hearts we thank the lord for the blessing that you given to us especially to our friends and family members and for the nourishment that you provide our god Father, thank you for being here today, for being in this place, Lord, being here in this place, oh God. Father, as we open our hearts to you, come, Lord, and saturate our hearts with your holy presence. Lord, teach us to worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the new life, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the new grace. We thank you, Lord, for everything, O oh God, that you have done in our family, even, Lord, in our lives, O oh God. We praise your name, Lord. Let's begin to give thanks to our God. Let's open our mouth and say, Lord, thank you for this day that you've given us another opportunity, O oh God, that we can worship, we can sing song of praise before your throne of grace. Hallelujah, you are worthy. You are faithful. We surrender everything to you, Jesus. We praise your name. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, we pick me up and turn me around. How we spin my feet and so holy ground. This all stand and makes me want a child. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you were.
is no other name but the name of Jesus will be lifted up in this place. A thousand generations rolling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the land we worship. Sing it again, a thousand generations. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Oh Lord, and all who come before us, and all who will believe, we we'll sing the song. Our hearts is the greatest. Your the name of Jesus stands above the law. Oh, all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands above the
was slain to the king of he is the coming king the bright and morning star you will always be he is the son of god and his name is jesus
on, church. Let's declare it. We magnify your name. You alone deserve your name. We honor and pray. Lord Jesus, this song is for She's bleeding. Can you take a minute of time to say a little prayer for her? And to Paolo Octavio and to Mrs. Tingal. Let's take this time of silence to, to pray. Yes. Oh Lord, we pray. We declare he. Father, we just come before you, surrender our Elder Lucy Kalau. Let your will be done on her as it is in heaven. Father God, salamat sa life ng Elder Lucy, Lord God. We know that you have a plan for her life and to her family. We know, Lord, that apart from you, we can do nothing. Father God, in this time of need, we are worthless, Lord God, if we don't acknowledge you as the Lord the King of King, the Lord of Lord of our life. Lord, teach us to fix our eyes on you. That whatever things that we do, we bring glory to your name. Father, touch every heart to just seek you, Lord, day by day. Those who are struggling right now, Lord God, I pray for comfort. I pray for peace that surpasses all understanding. For those who are sick, Lord God, I pray for your healing hands to touch them, Lord. They will receive healing. And they just call on your name, Lord God. Father, your name alone is to be praised. You are worthy of all our praises and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Good morning, a pleasant 
before the kids would render the song, we'd like to invite the kids to come in and give out the flags. Go, go, go. Give the flags to everybody. These flags represent the countries that need Jesus. and their people and that would remind us to pray for them that Jesus would be shared to them that more people would reach out to them and share the gospel to them that they would know how good our God is and how the Lord Jesus Christ and our Father loves them also just as we have experienced the love of our God so at the back of the flags are also information of these nations and come kids as we as you render now your songs your song Thank you. 
Thank you, kids. Uh, just an uh, information, if you have kids who want to join the kids choir, they practice every Saturday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, if you are interested, please approach Sister Tain. Anyway, uh, just for your information, if you don't know, this month we are uh, emphasizing our missions month, and today is our mission Sunday. That's why we have these little flags that the kids gave you. And I believe there's no uh, accidents, right? So maybe you know anyone from that place, or if you if there's something that is happening, it might remind you to to pray for this country or to pray for maybe a pastor or a missionary that is in that place, or maybe you have a friend there that we, that you can pray for them as well. So anyway, um, today I was tasked to to share a little bit of um, uh, the country of Nepal. Uh, actually, I, I was tasked to pray for a country and I requested Brother Jaime that if we could pray for Nepal. Uh, that was because two weeks ago, um, we were at Singapore and um, I was able to meet a pastor from Nepal and he was sharing uh, how hard it is for his congregation to attend a service because their church is in the mountains and they have to walk, some of his members have to walk maybe one to two hours just to go there to, to attend the service. And he, for him to visit them, he also have to walk one to two hours away. Their, their, their infrastructure is not that well, so they have to go around the mountains just to meet people, just to share with them and for them also to attend. And actually, I was surprised that uh, his last name, the Pastor Shering's last name was Sherpa. Usually when we hear about Sherpa, we know that they are the one who are helping people going up Mount Everest, right, Sherpas. I didn't know most of them are, most of them, the last name is Sherpa. And actually, this is not their main work. Most of the Nepalese are, um, are being, co uh, they, they, they apply as um, uh, part of the military of the British Empire of the, uh, most of the Europe con European countries, uh, they get uh, Nepalese you know, as their soldiers because Nepalese are very strong. Actually, uh, Pastor Chiring was sharing that for them to be drafted, for them to be taken as a soldier, mostly their, their training was they have to carry 20 kilos of bag and run or go up the mountain and sometimes they don't have that much food so that's why their capacity to endure is very great that's why they could go up mount everest mostly with a few packs right we can see mountain goers they have so big a backpack but the sherpas they just carry small stuff and they could survive and it's the same as a soldier they were uh, being get they were invited not really invited, they were hired as a soldier because of their endurance, okay? So, uh, well, um, I, I got this information from, uh, from the same information with the Joshua Project where we get the information of these countries. And Nepal has only around 5% uh, Christians, 5% Christians. So if there's 100 people, there's only maybe five. So if you can imagine in a village of 100 people, there's only maybe one family, right? Five of them who are Christians. And most of them are, uh, almost 82% are Hindus. And uh, there's almost 96% uh, unreached people groups as well. So I know uh, all these facts we can find in the internet, but uh, as we uh, right now, I just want us to pray for this. I also want to invite everyone. Um, I, I don't know if you get these flyers as well uh, from, the, from the outside. This is our missions budget for the year. So I, I'm inviting everyone as we pray for not only Nepal, but maybe for the other countries like Morocco or maybe Libya that has uh, had a severe typhoon recently. Let's also pray for the budget. We know that our budget is given to us by the Lord, right? And we give faithfully for the work of the Lord because we know these uh, people also need help. Right? And um, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, let's divide the, the, the chapel. 
uh, let's divide by four groups. Okay, the first two two chairs here. Let's pray for our budget and for the local church that we help, like TCF, uh, Alihis, um, Pastor Addis, uh, Trinity East Ministry, and Pastor Jesse in Lupandan. Also, Pastor Paul. He reaches out. He reaches out to the Chinese. Okay, and for this. Uh, group of people. Let's pray for uh, what's happening in Bacolod as well. There were a lot of people who were affected by Typhoon Goring just recently. And uh, our church helps. We give out tax, but I know we also need to not only just give something for them materially, we also need to reach out to them spiritually as well. I know you might know some pastors who, who knows them and how we can help, how we can connect with them. So let's pray about that. Okay. And also uh, for this, for the third uh, row, can I request you, let's pray for the Philippines as well, overall for the Philippines. Um, if you can see, we are also helping like BSOP, this is a seminary school for those who wants to be a pastor. Uh, we have Frontiers Philippines, they're reaching out to the Muslim, okay? Uh, they were here pr before the pandemic, they were able to give a report, but recently, uh, we were not able to invite them, but we continue to support them financially. I hope that one day we can again uh, hear from them. We are also um, helping, supporting, but at least in action, Brother Toti, who was our speaker just recently. So let's pray about them, okay? And the last two rows, let's pray also for the world. Like, again, if you have the heart to pray for Nepal uh, or for Morocco, especially. Um, actually, we have a missionary, Esther Gao, who we are supporting. She is assigned in Morocco. As of yesterday, I think Brother Jaime still doesn't know how to contact her. So we pray for her safety. We pray that uh, she's also being able to help those who are in need there. And let's also pray again for Libya. And maybe you know other details that are, that are happening. So let's, let's get a group of two or three, a family or a fr by friends. Okay, let's all stand. Let's pray by two or three. Let's just give five minutes to the Lord. Let's partner with Him and let's pray for all these things. Heavenly Father, you, you've heard the, the cries of our hearts. Father, we know how much you have loved everyone in this world. That you gave your only begotten Son to die on the cross for our sins. And Father, we are fortunate enough to hear of this good news. That's why we are here standing right now, give, lifting up our prayers, our requests to you. Because we know you have heard us, you are hearing us. Because we have you in our hearts. But Father, we also know 
There's a lot more to harvest. There's a lot of more people that we can reach out to. Our family members, our friends, classmates, fellow workers, our boss, our employees, even the people just we meet on the, fr on, on the streets or on, on some organizations. And Father, we know that the workers are few. But Father, we know we are here because we know we are called as well. Father, we are reminded by Elder Esther last time, once we become a Christian, we are in a battle. And Father, we know that we are winning because we have you on our side. But Father, we are also reminded we have a mission to go and make disciples. And Father, we don't want this that we are only winning by ourselves. We want to win more souls for you as well. So Father, right now as you hear our cries, as you hear our requests, Father, I pray that you will also continue to teach each and every soul that is in here in this chapel, that Father, we will continue to give our best for you. That, Father, we will live every day for you. That Father, we will love you the first. And, Father, we will give you the best of everything of us. And Father, as we continue to draw close to you, we know that you will teach us how to be a salt and a light to the people around us. Father, continue to use us mightily for your, for your glory and yours alone. And Father, we pray for everyone who are here. Thank you for partnering with you and with us, with the church, to help minister your word throughout wherever we go. Father, right now we live up to you the rest of the time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. And right now let me just uh, give you a few announcements again. Uh, this week is our missions, uh, this month is a missions month and uh, just to let you know, last year our target for the missions fund was 1.8 million and you were generous enough to give almost 2.5. So we have a lot of extras. So right uh, this year our target is 2.2. Let's continue to pray and I hope that you can continue to be generous enough to give. and. Having said that, next week is also our BSOP Sunday. So BSOP, again, as I've told you, we are sponsor, uh, supporting them. This is a school for those who want to go full-time. I think Pastor Paul graduated there, uh, Pastor Dave, uh, uh, Boksu, John before. He, they all, got all graduated from BSOP. So if you, there's in your heart to help as well, next week we have a special offering for BSOP Sunday. And uh, if you've seen outside, there's some pictures during our family day. We were uh, taking pictures here in the church. You can get that after the service. And if you need some more pictures, please approach Sister Tain. Okay, you can have an extra copy for free. Okay, so please approach uh, Sister Tain after the ch church or any time uh, to have it uh, reproduced for you. And lastly, I just want to remind everyone, uh, this year, December 24, we will be having our uh, musical. Okay, so we're looking for talents and even for hearts. If you want to help in the production team, in the music, in setting up, please approach Sister Tain or Sister Emily in the family uh, ministry. Okay, and if you think you know how to act, you know how to design, you know how to do props, you are very much welcome. And please sign up so that we could know how many people uh, are in the team, okay? So without further ado, our speaker for uh, today has been, uh, has been with us for the previous years and this year has been here actually. And uh, actually, I, I hope that some of you attended last night. Uh, he, 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 he encouraged us, you know, as, not only as leaders, as, but as servants of the Lord, how to continue serving Him. So uh, I hope that next time we could have the time as well to, to join all these seminars or uh, these trainings for us, so that we could continue to grow and uh, help serve the church in whatever capacity we can. So anyway, let me uh, invite uh, Reverend David Go. Let's welcome him and his wife, Suzanne, as they share the word of the Lord to us. Uh, may I have a, may I make a special request? 
Can we all please fill up these uh, empty seats? Kindly, kindly, kindly move forward. I, I feel so awkward, you know, to be speaking to uh, empty pews. So just, just move at least uh, two seats forward. You're, you're not going to die, you know, moving fo two seats forward, please. Thank you. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Okay, let me begin by sharing two stories with you. The first story is a story that I have read, and the second story is a story that I have experienced. Story number one. When uh, Charles Kohn, when he was the, the chancellor of Lee University in the U.S., uh, one day he was looking through a list of restaurants in Atlanta. And as he was looking at the list, he noticed that one of the restaurants, the name, the name was the Church of God Grill. Church of God. And uh, he, he was very curious. And so he called up the place to inquire, you know, how, how they, they got the name. The man who answered the phone, you know, generously explained to him. This place, he said, used to be a church. However, at one time, funds were low. So, you know, we decided to sell barbecue chicken. Probably in a sal, I don't know. And uh, so that we will be able to, you know, help pay the bill. Business was good. People love our chicken. So business was good and we, we became so busy. So eventually we cut down on our church activities. And not long after, we still find ourselves too busy. So we decided to just close the church and focus on barbecue chicken. Second story. Some years ago, I was leading uh, a team from our church. We went to, uh, to the Holy Land. And uh, one noon, we stopped by a Chinese restaurant, you know, for lunch. This restaurant was located in a small town. But it was filled with people. While we were waiting for our food, I noticed something. On the walls, there were posted Christian slogans, Bible verses in three languages, in, in English, in Chinese. It was, it was a Chinese restaurant. In English, in Chinese, and in Hebrew. Not only that, I noticed that the staff, they were very, you know, very polite and they were very cheerful as they serve us so i asked the tourist guide who was sitting beside me is the owner of the church a christian and he said oh yeah 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 the owner of it uh, the owner of the of the restaurant is a christian he said yes 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 and then he went on to tell me actually this used to be a church however he said you know there was one time because attendance was very low. So they decided that they are going to cook Chinese food. They are, they are in a small town, there are no Chinese restaurants, so they cook Chinese food in order to you know, encourage and invite people to church. Lo and behold, Chinese food always good. Lots of people came. Eventually, they have to close down the church and focus on being a restaurant. I don't know how, how you respond, how you, how you, how you uh, react to those two stories. Personally, when I heard those two stories, I was sad, I was angry. I was sad, I was angry for obvious reason. These Christians, these churches, they allowed minor things, you know, to take over the major work that they need to do. They allow certain activities which originally might be good. 
you know, to sidetrack them and in fact to even distract them totally from doing what they are supposed to do. The mission of the church is to go and make disciples of all nations. Not only the church as a whole, but we individual Christians. It is our duty. The Lord has commanded us to go and make disciples of all nations. Sad to say, today there are many churches. I'm not talking about this church, I hope. But there are many churches who focus too much on activities, on programs, on a lot of good things. And in the end, they lose out on the best thing, the gospel. Many Christians, many churches today, they focus on the minor and they are not unable to do the major. And because of that, this morning, I am inviting you to study Acts chapter 10 with me. If you have your Bibles with you, kindly open your Bibles to Acts chapter 10. In the interest of time, we are not going to read this whole passage. We will be looking at verse 1 to 33. But don't worry. We will be off before 12. Promise. We are not going to read the whole passage and I am not going to preach on every verse. I just want to highlight some of the verses from Acts chapter 10 and help us understand why we need to share the gospel. I just want to remind you, where do I point this? Here? Okay. I just want to remind you that when our Lord was here on earth, He ordered us in Mark chapter 16, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to every nation. I want to remind you, Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission, all authority, Jesus said, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, go. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Acts chapter 1. Jesus told his disciples, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the world. And then... This one I love very much. Matthew chapter 4, 24. Jesus said, This gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world before the end comes. So if we want Jesus to come quickly, let us be sharing the gospel. Not only are we commanded to share the gospel, but here is a good motivation for us to share the gospel. Because until and unless the gospel is preached to all nations, the return of Christ will be delayed out of his compassion, you know, for the whole world. So this morning, we are going to study Acts chapter 10, and we are going to look at some key reasons, just four. Four key reasons why we need to be making disciples of all nations. As I said, we are not going to read the whole entire passage. I would just like to highlight some of the passages. Now, if we look at verse 1, we will find the first reason. We must actively make disciples of all nations, number one, because people are searching for God and they are waiting for His salvation. People are searching for God and they are waiting for His salvation. The book of Acts, I want you to know, and I'm sure you all know this. It was written by Luke, and his intention was to give a report about the growth of the church. His intention partly was to help us understand the history of the church, of how the church progressed and developed after Jesus ascended to heaven. So that was the intention of Acts chapter 10 and the book of Acts as a whole. However, in verse 1 of chapter 10, Luke mentioned someone, someone by the name of Cornelius. At Caesarea or Caesarea, sometimes that's read as Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion 
of what was known as the Italian cohort, a devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms generously to the people and prayed continually to God. Now, I want you to understand, I want to remind you that Cornelius, he was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. Okay, very important. Now, how do we know that he was a Gentile? Several reasons. Number one, the name Cornelius is a Roman name. It's not a Jewish name. So just by the name alone, you, you have a hint that he's not a Jew. Uh, secondly, he lived in Caesarea. Caesarea is in the region of Samaria. Again, we know that Jews don't live in the region of Samaria. Not only that, Caesarea used to be inhabited by the Phoenicians, foreigners. Later on, it was highly populated by Romans. When King Herod, you know, renovated the place and named it after the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus. So it is a, you know, a Gentile region. And then thirdly, the Bible clearly tells us that Cornelius was a centurion. He was an officer, you know, of the Roman army, a foreign army. Now, according to Luke, this Gentile, he was God-fearing. He was not a Jew, but he fears the God of the Jew. Luke also tells us that he was constantly praying. He was not a Jew, but he was praying to the God of the Jews. He was giving alms because he knows that the God of the Jews care for the poor. So he was giving alms because he knows that that is the heart of God. In other words, this Gentile, he was living in Gentile lands and he was searching for God. He wants to be connected to God. He wants to communicate with God. He wants to know God. He wants to please God. So from here, it becomes clear to us that truly there are people everywhere who are looking for God. Even in the unlikeliest of places in Caesarea, in a Roman, in the camp of a Roman army, even among the unlikeliest of people, the centurion, the officer you know, of a Roman army, he was looking for God. Yes, brothers and sisters, we have to understand and we have to put it in our heart and in our mind that truly, everywhere you go, there are people searching for God. And that is why I'm sure all of you have traveled. When you travel to foreign countries, to different places, you will see temples, mosques, you will see, you know, shrines, chapels, churches. My wife and I, we, <clears throat> we go to India and Nepal very often. So Brother Fred was mentioning about Nepal. And, you know, my heart just skipped. I, I love Nepal. We go to Nepal, we go to India very so often. Everywhere you go, you will see idols, you will see shrines, you will see temples. You will see religious teachers. You will see religious people. In fact, when we were in Nepal, or, or most of the time when we, were, we are in Nepal, we live in the house of a pastor. Right across the narrow road that his house is situated, there's a shrine. And people every day would be there ringing a bell and then praying to whatever God's there. So... Yun ang ano namin, alarm clock. Every morning, people, five o'clock, they will be ringing the bell because they are praying to their God who is sleeping. So they have to ring, ring the bell so that God will wake up and they will, they will pray to Him. Do you know that 95%, according to statistics, 95% of the world's population, 95%, they have some forms of religious beliefs. Do you know that 85% of the population of the world, they belong to a religion, to an organized religion? Do you know that the number of major religions today in the world 
is 14. There are now 14 major religions. A major religion would have devotees of at least a hundred million. So you could just imagine. Do you know that in the world today, there are about 4,000 minor religions? People, what is religion? Religion is people's way of seeking, searching for God. Yes, people are searching for God. Unfortunately, there are many of us, and I say many, there are many of us, we are too engrossed with our own thing. We are too engrossed with our own family, with our own business, with our own children, with our own education, with our own career. Some of us, we are active in church, yes. But even in church, we are still engrossed in our own thing. Our activities, our programs, our fellowship, our discipleship group. I'm not saying it's bad, but many times, we are just too engrossed with these things that we do not see. That out there, there are millions of people. They are waiting for God. Therefore, we have to do something. My wife and I, we travel a lot to mission fields. And let me tell you, you know, it's, it really, it really shears my heart, you know, to see people living in darkness. Unfortunately, many of us, we are just too comfortable, you know, sitting on the church pew, singing songs of praise on Sunday, having fellowship with one another. We don't see all these things. But let me tell you truly, we have been to uh, Laos, oh, no, sorry, to, to Malaysia and, and, and to Thailand. Thailand, you know, everywhere you go, you know, you would see Buddhist temples and very big monuments uh, of, of Buddha. In Malaysia, we were there two weeks ago. In Malaysia, you see a lot of mosques. You go to malls, you go to hotels, restaurants, airports, you'll see prayer rooms for people to pray. People are searching for God. So may the Lord help us. Let us not be too engrossed, you know, with our fried chicken. Let us not be too engrossed, you know, with our activities. Because if we are not careful, we will be sidetracked by all these things. We have to share the gospel. We have to be involved in missions because of that first reason. People are searching for God and they are looking for salvation. A second reason, if you look at our passage, you'll come to realize that we have to be involved in, uh, in disciple making because God is on the move. God is on the move to save people and we have to cooperate with Him. In other words, not only are people looking for God, but God is responding to their searching. People are looking for God and today, God is moving heaven and earth in order to save them. If you would only care to listen to some missionary stories, particularly from the Middle East, you will see how God today is performing miracles after miracles, just so people would understand, like in the New Testament times, that God is real. In India, we go there and we often hear of miracle stories of how God is moving. In our passage, take note. Cornelius was there. He was praying. And then, because he was praying, God sent an angel. When he saw the angel, he was terrified. Who would not be? So he said, Lord, what is this all about? And the Lord, uh, and the angel said, you know, the Lord has heard your prayers. The Lord had seen what you are doing. And so he said, the Lord is about to answer your prayers. Send someone to Joppa. There, there's a man by the name of Peter. Call him. He's going to tell you, you know, about the gospel. 
as all these things were happening in Joppa, 50 kilometers away, Peter was about to pray. And when he was about to pray, God also gave him a vision. We all know the story. From heaven, there was this big shit coming down. And there, there are many different kinds of creatures, strange creatures, reptiles, birds. And God said, take and eat. The reptiles, the different birds represent the different people of the world. So God said, take and eat. And Peter said, no, 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 no. I've never eaten these things before. These, these things are unclean. Three times the Lord told him, what I have declared to be clean, do not say it is unclean. In other words, God is telling Peter, now is the time for me to respond and I am going to respond. Since then, up to this very day, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, God is moving heaven and earth so that people will come to him. Especially, we are living in the last days. God knows that very soon, history, you know, and all the things that we are used to would fold up. And it's all over. Game over. So right now, he's moving heaven and earth so that people will come to know him. We have, you know, to be part of it. May you allow me to share two more stories. You know, I'm a storyteller. First story. This comes from uh, our missionary in India, Ram Charan. Ram Charan, you know, was an atheist. Very brilliant. And every time there is someone who is talking about religion, not just Christianity, but any religion, he would argue. He would argue with that person. He would try to prove that there is no God. So when our missionary went to his village, he argued with the missionary day and night. Now, Ram Charan, because of his brilliance, he had already proven many of the religions of this world to be fake you know, to be false. So one day he decided, I am going to prove Christianity to be false. So, but he, he did not know anything about Christianity. What did he do? He went to buy a Bible. And he read the Bible by the grace of God from cover to cover in a few short weeks. How many of you have done that? Probably a few short years, wala pa. But this person, by the grace of God, he was able to read the Bible from cover to cover in a few short weeks. He decided there is a God. But he cannot understand who Jesus is. So he went to the missionary. He asked the missionary to explain to him about Jesus. All this while, the missionary and his believers day and night they were praying for Ram Charan. So that day when he came, they were ready. They shared the gospel to him. He became a Christian. He even volunteered to receive baptism. You know, in India, people can say, I believe in Jesus. But the deciding point is always, you know, the baptism. The baptism is that point of no return for them. But this person, he volunteered to be baptized. Today, he does not argue with the missionary anymore. In fact, he is the missionary's most faithful servant, assistant. He would always go out, you know, with the missionary to share the gospel to other people. Isn't that amazing? An atheist being able to read the Bible, you know, in a few short weeks, and then coming to Christ. Second story. Early this year, my wife and I, we were in Mindanao. We are from Mindanao. So we went to Mindanao to visit some of our missionaries. While we were in Davao, our missionary there, who, who is working among the Muslims, invited us to a village 
Muslim village, fishing village. And there, after we ministered to the pastors, the missionaries there, he invited us to visit a teenager. This young man, he has a very big cancerous lump for years. And for years, he keeps on coughing. He has lung, a lung problem. They are poor. They have spent all their monies in doctors, in hospitals. He was still sick. So when we were there, we visited, we ministered to him, we, we prayed for him. You know, there's nothing much we can do. We gave him a little money so that he can buy some medicines. And then we left. Back in Manila, we pray some more for this person and then no more. But just two weeks ago, we received news from our missionary six months later. And he said, this person that you prayed for, that we all prayed for, his cancer is totally gone. Without medicine, without surgery. He does not cough anymore. And he said the most wonderful thing of all, this person and his mom, they are coming to church because they attribute his healing to Jesus Christ. And that young man, just a few weeks ago, he attended a youth Christian camp because he wants to know more, more about Isa al Masih, about our Savior, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, God is moving heaven and earth. Unfortunately, we are too busy in our pantries, you know, preparing chicken in a salt. I'm not saying I love chicken in a salt, by the way. There's nothing wrong, you know, preparing chicken in a salt for people. There's nothing wrong, you know, to come up with good programs. But so many times we are just too engrossed with these things, we don't care about you know, the people living in the dark. We are just so happy that every week we come, there's a speaker, we have songs to sing, we have faces to, you know, to see, and smiles to appreciate. That's all. Brothers and sisters, God is moving. We have to cooperate with Him. <clears throat> just look at what had happened. Peter, he was praying. And God showed him the vision. He was 50 miles, uh, 50 kilometers away. But God was moving. And God said, take and eat. He said, no, no, no. That's unclean. And God said to him three times, never say these things are unclean. Every person, you know, I, I love to Save. Third reason why we must be active in disciple making, in sharing the gospel to all nations, in doing missions, is because it is the plan of God. It is the heart, the passion of God to save the entire world. It is His heart, it is His passion. Allow me now to remind you that the book of Acts, and particularly Acts chapter 10, it was recorded not just to show us the history of the church. Yes, that's part of the reason. It was recorded not just to let us know how the gospel moved from the Jews to the Gentiles. That was part of his intention. But Acts chapter 10 was written to show us the heart of God. To show us what is His passion. To reveal to us what is His deepest desire. Look at verses 9 to 16 and you will understand. We are told that when the men of Cornelius were approaching Joppa, Peter was going up to the rooftop in order to pray. Now, we have to understand that in those days, the Jews, even today, many of the Jews, they pray three times a day. The first time would be at 9 o'clock in the morning. 
This will be, you know, their morning sacrifice. The second time would be around noon time. This, this would be the time of their thanksgiving. And then the third time, you know, would be 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Or around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, this will be in preparation for their evening sacrifice. So, Peter was praying his second prayer. He was very re religious, he was very faithful, and he was about to pray. And I want you to take note of what the Bible says. And he became hungry and wanted to eat something. And while they were preparing it, he fell into a trance. I want you to take note of this. In the English Bible, or even if you look at that Chinese Bible, it says, you know, he became hungry. And many of us will say, yeah, what's, you know, what's so curious about that? It's noontime, all of us will, will be hungry. However, if you look at the Greek Bible, the Greek Bible tells us he was caused to be hungry. It was not a natural hunger, you know, that we feel. I'm sure by now some of you are already hungry. Not that kind of hunger. He, it was caused by God. Because the passion of God, you know, was to save all men. So he caused Peter to be hungry because he wants to show him the things that he needs to eat. So because of that, he fell into a trance. Let me remind you, brothers and sisters, it is God's desire. It is God's plan for the gospel, you know, to spread all over the world. That is why he caused Peter to be hungry. That is why he caused people, Peter to fall into a trance. That is why, you know, he let down all those strange things. Because his desire is to save all people from Joppa to Caesarea, from a small town, you know, to, uh, from the city to a small town. Joppa is a city, Caesarea is a small town. He wants the gospel, you know, to be spread from the land of the Jews to the land of the Gentiles. From Holo, you know, from Apari to Holo. That's the heart of God. So we must, you know, cooperate with him. We all know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Second Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not wishing that any, he does not wish that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 the gospel is the power of God for everyone power of God for salvation of everyone everyone who believes to the Jews and then to the Greeks Titus chapter 2 verse 11 for the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all people not just Filipinos not just Chinese not just Asians, but to all people. John 3.36 Whoever, regardless of your grace, of, of your race, of your gender, you know, of your education background, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. John 5.24 Jesus says, Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. One more. Romans chapter 10, 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be, will be saved. That is the heart of God. That is the passion of God. A missionary went to Africa. And he shared the gospel to an elderly woman. When the woman understood the gospel... She received Jesus as her Savior. She turned her life over to Christ immediately. Immediately after that, she wanted to share the gospel. No one told, he, told her to share the gospel. But immediately, she wanted to share the gospel because she knows this is the heart of God. 
Salvation is not only for me, it is for everyone. But she has a problem. She was old, she was sickly, she was blind. How many of us have all these three things today? Raise your hands. I know that many Christians are deaf. They are not blind. They don't hear the message. But this woman, she was old, sickly, she was blind. But she wanted to share the gospel. So she thought of a good plan. She bought a French Bible. Went to the missionary and asked the missionary to open it to John 3.16. And then underlined the verse in red. And then he asked the missionary to put a bookmark. So that she will know, you know, where, where the verse is. By the way, she does not know French. So, the missionary was really curious. What would this old woman do with a French Bible when she does not know French and she could not read? So, the missionary followed the woman. Lo and behold, every afternoon, this old woman would stand by the school. And when the bell rings and people come out, the, the students come out, he would, she would just grab anyone. And then she would ask the question, do you know French? And many of them, you know, said yes. Can you read this verse for me? And when they read the verse, she would ask, do you understand? Most of them would not. And she would explain the gospel to her. According to the missionary, because of what she did, many, many students came to Christ. And the most wonderful of all, 24 of them later became missionaries. Brothers and sisters, it is God's passion. I hope that we have the passion of God. I hope we understand the heart of God just like that old woman. If a sickly, old, blind woman can share the gospel, we have no reasons not to share the gospel. Uh, one more thing before all of you go hungry and go into a trance. We have to be actively making disciples of all nations because many, many have already obeyed. They are now involved in missions. So must we. Now, by saying this, I need to qualify. I'm not saying that all of us, we need to go out and be missionaries. If that is so, your church will have no members. And obviously, the Lord does not call every one of us, you know, to be cross-cultural missionaries. But all of us, we are called to make disciples. Near as well as far. We are called to be involved in disciple-making. If the Lord calls you to be a missionary, don't say no. Do not run away from Him. You will regret it. When the Lord called me to full-time ministry, I struggled for seven years. Now I've been serving the Lord almost 40 years and I regret that I wasted seven years. Don't say no if the Lord asks you to be a missionary. If the Lord asks you to pray for missionaries, he, he does not ask you to go, pray, then pray. Not just mumble some words, but pray. Pray for your missionaries. Pray for the work of missions. If the Lord has blessed you materially and He is challenging you to support the work of missions, by all means, give generously, give faithfully. I want you to take note of verse 23. When Peter went to see Cornelius, the Bible tells us some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. Now, who, who were these people? The Bible does not tell us, but it's very obvious. They were Jewish Christians because at that time, 
you know, the great majority of the Christians, they were Jews. Now, they were typical Jews. First of all, a typical Jew considers Gentiles, you know, as unclean. They have prejudice, they have discrimination against Gentiles. Mga Hudyo eh. You know, Hudyo, they are very proud. Uh, secondly, a typical Jew, they hate the Romans. Why? Because the Roman controlled them. The Roman took over the country. Thirdly, a typical Jew at that time, they particularly hate Roman soldiers. Why? Because Roman soldiers, they were very corrupt. They were very cruel. And they were particularly cruel to the Jews. So, but who are these people? Why did they go with Peter? Because they came to understand. Peter is going there to share the gospel to this heathen, to these unbelievers. I want to be a part. And I hope again that we would have that kind of heart. Initially, these people, they have their hang-ups. They have their discriminations. They were reluctant. However, they went. They went despite of the troubles, of the inconveniences. By the way, 50 kilometers is a long way to walk. At that time, they don't have Toyota Innova, L300, no. They had to walk. I want you to understand, by going there, they face the risk of rejection. Some of the Gentiles might reject them. By going there, I want you to understand, they face the risk, you know, of, uh, of being lab labeled as traitors by their fellow Jews. Traitor! You're associating with the Romans, with the Roman soldiers. However, because they know that these people need the gospel, so they went. In closing, allow me to share with you two stories again. So I hope you are not bored with my stories. The first story is a story that I have heard from one of our mission partners in India. We have three mission partners and one of them you know, wrote, wrote to me this story. The second story, you know, is a story of our church. Allow me to narrate a little, a little bit. I'm not going to take long about our church. In deep humility. I'm not trying to put our church in the pedestal because our church is far, far from being perfect. But I want to talk a little about our mission work. First story. Our partner in the north, in North India, he re recently wrote this to me. I want you to understand. I want you to listen. The region that we work in is one of the most unrich regions in India. Almost 5,000 villages still do not have any Christian presence. Wow, 5,000 villages. Dito, bawat barangay, you know, there is, you see chapels, you see churches. There, 5,000 villages have no Christian presence. Not a single Christian. However, he said, our primary vision to reach the unrich and to start churches still stand despite, you know, the big number. And he said, our team does that by bringing the gospel. We are committed to bring the gospel to every house. Wow. To every house in these villages. And then he added this report. This month, our team went out, they did evangelism in an extremely rural region. Four hours away from the city. He said, for the first time, people heard the gospel in these villages. And many village people, including children, they responded to the preaching of the good news. We have wonderful responses 
from these villages. And he said the gospel is now spreading from village to village in North India today. And then he closed by saying, thank you for your partnership. Actually, we were not directly partnering with them in doing evangelism, but we pray for them, we support them, we write letters to them. And that is one thing that you can do. A second story. Again, please understand, I am saying this, you know, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say this. In, in deep humility, let me tell you the story of our church. As many of you know, our church was established to reach the Filipino Chinese in, in Manila. However, some years ago, our former pastor, uh, Reverend Mark Chengkor, uh, some of you may know him, he was invited to Tacloban. When he went and when he came home, he was very discouraged because in Tacloban, he did not see any missionary, he did not see any worker. Just a few Christians gathering and he was asked there, uh, he was asked to come and preach. He was very challenged. So he went to our church members, our church leaders and said, let's send a missionary to Tacloban. Do you know what the people said? What our members said? Very typical, you know, of Christians today. Very typical of Chinese. And many of them said, why bother? We're just a small church. Why do we need to be involved in missions? Many of them, they were saying, we have no money. You know, we barely have enough for our own church. And I'm sure you have heard sometimes, you know, those reasons in your church. Some of our members, they say, we cannot even take care of ourselves. Why do we take care of others? And some of them were even saying, you know, our work here in Manila is not yet done. So why bother about the work, you know, in Tacloban? However, the Lord moved in the heart of the leaders. And He particularly moved in the hearts of the members of our men's fellowship. Any of you members of the men's fellowship, maybe God is going to talk to you. Our men, I'm sorry to say this, but, but in our church, we have many fellowships. And men's fellowship is the smallest. Some old men. And the Lord moved them. So they said, okay, let's contribute our money and send a missionary. So that year, we were able to send one missionary. The following year, you know, the vision, you know, the people caught the vision. So they started to contribute. If the men's fellowship could do it, why can't we? So they started to contribute. We were able to send seven. And then the following years, year, we were able to send nine. By the grace of God, we have been doing this for a good number of years. Today, let me report to you in deep humility. We are supporting 98 missionaries. Brothers and sisters, if you go to our church, you will understand. You look at our demographics. Most of our members, they are young people, students, young professionals. We only have a handful of rich people, of big business people. If God can use us, definitely He can use you. Bacolod is a very rich city and there are many rich people I know. Now, I'm, I'm not here to guilt trip you. I'm just stating a fact. If God could use us, students, professionals, He can also use you. So may the Lord help us. May the Lord challenge us. We have to make disciples of all nations. We have to be involved in the work of missions. May the Lord continue to speak to you even as we leave this place and may He move you not just to be listeners but to be doers of the word.
Indeed, God has called, God called us today. And as a response, may I invite everybody to please stand. And before I forget, um, after our service, at the back you can get your flaglets and pray for the country or the place that God called you to pray for. May that song become our prayers sincerely. Let us now receive the benediction of the Lord. May you all grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving glory to Him, our Lord and Savior, until we meet Him face to face. And faithfully making disciples of all nations near and far. Following the footsteps of our Lord and heeding the command of the Holy Spirit participating in the work of mission until that day when we stand before his throne to give an accounting of our life and to live responsibly until then. Amen. See you next time.